What's up guys, Neptune here. If you found this video, that probably means you're looking to buy a Saab 9.3. Maybe you want it as a, a daily commuter. You're looking to maybe have a new car or toy to play with. And you're probably wondering, well, since this brand doesn't make cars anymore, uh, what issues am I gonna deal with? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk to you guys about the issues. And I actually have, uh, well, I have no flashcards here with quite a list it's 13 issues plus I have one honorable mention um, problem a problem you may or may not deal with now again depending on where you live in the country and who you're buying the car from these are just the most common issues that you'll most likely see if you get one um, not being a since this company is not making cars anymore chances are you're not gonna find a low used low mileage model unless it's the highest trim which would be the turbo X models um, those are the all-wheel drive uh, aero models anyway so we'll start with the uh, the honorable mention which I'm I unfortunately have this issue myself the honorable mention that I didn't put on the list rust you're gonna have rust if you buy this car anywhere in the rust belt or anywhere near the rust belt these cars rust and this is the most common location near this arch in the rear and once you pull the fender you may even find more I personally haven't pulled the fenders although I do have a ton of surface rust underneath the car this car came from Wisconsin and unfortunately I think the previous owner neglected it and they never bothered to deal with it so I actually have rust on both both uh, rear quarters here this one is nowhere near as bad as that side but it's there I popped the hood already so let's go look at the number one the first issue you'll have to deal with which I think I'm about to have to start dealing with it in the engine bay there's two places where there's issues right here is the turbo this is a just ju just a giant heat soak and with these cars the battery sits right next to this all this heat here causing the battery to overheat at some point from what I've read in the forums you can put a brand new battery in and within a few months you'll have to change the battery because the heat caused the battery to drain too quickly the other problem you might want to look for is the coolant reservoir tank now if you look here at, at my brake fluid reservoir it's clear if you had a replacement reservoir tank it'll be clear as well uh, or the replacements will be black the original ones will be clear I believe there was a recall for those so most likely yours would be replaced on any of the new gen models um, so yeah if you have if you see that and it's black most likely it's been done but like mine is already beginning to crack again if you look right here I have a little coolant and it, there's probably a small hairline crack somewhere around here and I'm gonna have to probably take care of that soon but if you end up replacing it it's best to replace it with a uh, not an OEM one they make they they do make a metal reservoir tank which is a lot more durable and it will never break just something to, to uh, think about uh, number two on this uh, when turning or a banging noise when turning and I actually have this issue myself it just came up recently the issue tends to be when you're driving and you are turning in any corner at any rate of speed usually usually mine happens more often when I'm going slow or hitting potholes uh, the problem is a either a a top mount bearing so up here underneath underneath the uh, this uh, section here uh, you have an issue with the top mount bearing those tend to break quite frequently also I should have turned my wheel but also you could have a uh, cracked or broken spring uh, near the perch my um, this side the uh, passenger side is the more common side to fail um, this is from what I've read in the forums anyway it is the more common side to fail and uh, you usually have somewhere near the perch the crack the spring it act itself will actually crack I believe in the linear it happens a lot in the arrows because they did use a different suspension uh, all the cars had different suspension it happens more in the new gen models which is this this 
face this front fascia I don't know if it happens in the facelifted version of the car although um, since I haven't really researched this since I don't have that model if you do get this is the older fascia this one is more you more than likely will find these than you will the newer generations um, but at least in this one there you may or may not have some, some suspension issues and if you do you can just buy the whole kit uh, there's Aesop parts and uh, uh, there's another website I think it's called Euro parts they sell the whole kit and you can buy the OEM Bosch units which are quite good another uh, common common problem this only relates to the v6 turbo model is when you have to go ahead and replace have to go ahead and replace the spark plugs and coil packs you have two banks the front bank is up here which is simple to get to but this rear bank you're gonna have to remove a ton of stuff to get to it uh, notably the ECU which is right behind this little uh, plastic cover right here um, that's just something else to to know if you want to wrench on it yourself that is just just another point of contention that you have to think about now other than the rust and obviously rust can happen anywhere on the car we're gonna move inside the car which is where a lot of other issues uh, tend to occur now the next one is right here it's with the key with the key you have a problem most used cars will only have one key which is not a good thing because you don't want just one key on this car on my car I had one and I had to buy a second key which in total was maybe 150 bucks to get the key and then get it programmed to this car but the key has a sensor which with the ignition if you heard that click that unlocked my steering wheel the problem is because the cup holder is right here um, some used cars people may or may not care they'll go ahead and just leave their drinks right here in the cup holder they'll hit a bump boom you have water all over your ignition now you've just destroyed your whole ignition right here which will not allow your car to start because now the sensor is broken alternatively if this doesn't break sometimes the lock breaks I have another video and it happened in my Volvo I'll, if you guys have a Volvo I link the video um, <clears throat> it's on my channel it's the same situation where the steering column locks and it won't unlock and because it won't unlock it doesn't know that it can start the car there are fixes to this you can find them on the forums there's a there's a way to bypass it through the um, uh, through the fuses on inside the engine bay uh, you can totally bypass the lock although if you don't feel comfortable doing that it's just the FYI you would have to change um, one you have to change this down here your ignition uh, there's a full word for it. I'll leave links to all these parts in the description, by the way. You'll have to change out this, and you'll also have to change out the locking mechanism that's behind the steering column, which is actually down in here. Um, they're not very cheap to fix. Some of them, you can find them used pretty cheap, but then you still have to get it programmed to your car because it, it doesn't just work by plug and play as far as I know. Okay. Slipping on, and this only affects the automatic uh, you can't see it because I have this boot over my uh, automatic, the, the whole gear lever area where you see all the gears that you're putting your car into. The car has an issue. Let me start the car. The car has an issue where you're trying to shift manually and it will slip. Or you'll be just driving along normally. You'll, you'll hit the gas and try to overtake someone. I personally don't have this problem, but this is just, again, these are common issues that I've read over the, over on the forums. Um, you'll try to overtake someone and you won't be able to. So that's number three. You'll have a tr transmission issues. Generally, a car this old will have a transmission problem, most likely, unless it's an economy car that was built to just last forever. These are, these are technically sport luxury cars, so... They're also European with a touch of GM, which is not a good thing. Um, they do last a long time. I've I've seen them. I've seen a few online, 200,000 miles, 250,000 miles still running. Uh, you can find them at that mileage, and they they can last a while. But 
Uh, it's just things to uh, just things to recognize. Uh, four ignition issues. Five was battery issues. So we're done with the first first page. So number six, uh, the fuel level sensor. This is a problem I dealt with maybe the, within the first week of owning this car, and it's a, this is one of the biggest common problems that every single Saab owner of this generation will have. More than likely, it's like 99% percent of the people that are on the Facebook groups and then the forums have had this problem. Right here is your fuel level sensor. It will read empty. I think I I don't think I made a video on it, but it will read empty even though you've just filled your tank, and then it will the level sensor in your fuel in your fuel tank will actually try to adjust itself, and you'll start seeing your fuel level go up and down as if it doesn't know where it's at, even though you just filled it. And when that happens, it's not a make it or break it kind of thing. I mean. I drove on it for about a week and a half before I just changed out my whole fuel pump, which is another thing on the car that you'll have to look at is uh, the fuel pumps are generally not the best. Um, so I guess that's number seven, the fuel level sensor. But if you go to change the fuel pump, you might as well, you're going to get the fuel level sensor since it all comes as one unit. Um, but you don't have to get the whole fuel pump if yours is not bad. This isn't a bad thing, but it does, uh, it's just super annoying, I guess in total so the fuel system is number seven um, number eight SID issues the SID or uh, SID is this guy up here um, on this generation pre facelift um, the SID was up here and after they facelifted the interior the SID moved from over here to down here um, on these cars, mine I think is starting to have it. Mine is starting to flicker all weird and stuff. You may or may not be able to see it on camera. But the controls here tend to stick and then you can't really cycle through them. Um, eventually they, they can fail. The LCD screen can start to go fuzzy and you won't really be able to read what's on there. Um, just things to look out for. This, I don't know the cost or how to fix it since I haven't run into the problem yet. Although my currently, you can't tell on video, but... I'm looking at it and it is flickering so I'm pretty sure mine is my SID is going bad but it's where all your information is displayed you have your arrival times um, I did do a review on the car and it, this part is towards the end of that video but you have all your information here that you normally see like for example in a Volkswagen it would be over here which they did switch it to the your uh, your gauge cluster in the newer uh, the newer models so that was number seven, or sorry, number eight. Uh, so number nine, uh, hesitation and surging while idling. This Now this, um, I have not actually gotten this issue uh, just yet, but it is something to think about because it is a problem that does plague a few vehicles. Um, what happens is the uh, throttle body in this car is electronically controlled as with most new cars now and the car has a issue with carbon buildup near the ports of the throttle body and it can cause the the actual plate in the throttle body to stick which then causes you to surge now the only real fix for this is um, the only real fix for this is actually two, there's two options. You have the first one being, uh, you're gonna have to clean your throttle body. Before replacing it, that's actually the first thing you should do is clean your throttle body. The second thing you should do, if that doesn't work, is to go ahead and replace it all together. Um, personally, I have not run into this problem. Um, I had an issue with something like this recently, although my my car is it does it does weird things sometimes and that's something you'll have to remember is in the sobs things happen things just happen you know they're just weird i'm gonna quickly go through these last few because there's not many left um so clicking noise this is number 10 clicking noise in the dash another common issue and this is actually common on a lot of gms so i just hit my recirculate button it's right here when you hit it again that clicking noise 
a lot of I've, I've had a Ford Fiesta it had that same issue my Hyundai Veloster had this issue I guess it's really a common issue in most older cars uh, the recirculation motor that's in within the HVAC system has plastic gears and they tend to break or fail causing that clicking noise to happen it's something that happens the older the car gets as well as you know it's just a common thing number 11 um, engine rattle now this is the biggest one my car is not experiencing this and I am actually kind of worried about when it does if you get a uh, Saab 93 any generation um, I don't actually know if it's any generation but it's a common occurrence on the 2.0 models and it happens on the V6's and that is the timing chain tensioner you can go and look at any Saab story on YouTube you can look you can just google Saab timing chain tensioner problems and you'll find dozens and dozens and dozens of people's stories of them neglecting their timing chain and never replacing it now the problem with that is you'll get a very loud clicking when you're idling I'm actually gonna move you will get a very loud clicking when you're idling and it's the sound of your tensioner starting to fail in these motors the um, if the oil you need to change the oil period this car needs the oil to be changed religiously and if you don't change the oil religiously eventually your timing chain loses lubrication causing little little bits of metal to build up in the engine slowly but surely it's going to eat away at your tensioner your tensioner is going to fail when your tensioner fails your car dies you just literally blew up your engine and this is this is an urgent thing I think if you if you buy the car and you hear a very unusual uh, like it sounds almost like a slapping sound like metal slapping metal you can just go on YouTube and uh, you'll find videos of the timing chain tensioner failing it's it's not a very it's you'll know if you if you go to test drive a used one uh, stay away from those because I actually got quoted for this since this is a v6 I ha I'd have to buy the kit twice I think the kit is maybe 400 bucks, 500 bucks. Um, the shop I went to is a Saab, um, a Saab authorized dealer. I guess Saab authorized, uh, since they don't, you know, but they only work on Saabs. And he quoted me about $1,600 to just do one side. So to do both sides would have been a $3,200 job, and that costs more than what this car actually costs. Now, the last two, um, they're not really they're nitpicky number one what's up guys is the seat belt my seat belt does not retract well it does it retracts very slowly and some cars you'll get in and they won't retract at all this one I, I actually had to lubricate my seat belt and it helped it uh, it helped it actually retract better but there's actually a little a little tensioner inside the mechanism in the seat belt I don't know if you guys saw that since I couldn't see the camera um, there's a little uh, mechanism in the seat belt that allows you to go ahead and retract the belt. That tends to fail, and that's also something that's safety related, and I would change that immediately. For me, mine still retracts. It retracts slowly, but it does lock since I've, I've, had, I've tested the brakes a few times, and it does lock still. So as long as it still locks, you're, you should still definitely be safe. And the last one, you can't tell because I did replace all these buttons. Uh, I'll leave a link in the video if you... Um, you have one and you want to replace your buttons but Saab um, when they built these cars new they put a, a plastic coating almost as if they had like a precursor to Plasti Dip it was like a plastic rubberized coating over them these two buttons right here are still coated uh, it's kind of rubbery um, so yeah they put this coating on there and it, over time it fails and it starts to peel and it looks very ugly that's why if you uh, you can just go online you'll see photos of people's buttons and they're all like warped like uh this one is still kind of like weird like you see this guy looks like an actual person this one looks I don't know like somebody like getting their head blown off this is not good well it's it, 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 it's just nitpicky I guess uh, anyway so that's the I guess 14 things to look out for it's quite a lot At the end of the day these cars are still good um, don't be the uh, don't be uh, discouraged to shop for one of these. They're, they're not bad cars. Just 
look out for the common issues and try to take care of them if you see them. Um, if you can find a good used one, most most of the people in the uh, forums, just find an enthusiast really that has, just find a, uh, an enthusiast that has um, taken care of theirs and you'll most likely have no problems if you really want one. They're not bad cars. They have their fair share, their fair share of problems and being an older car, a lot of the, the plastic components are failing already and you're gonna have this issue with most uh, used vehicles. So just something to look out for. Um, if this video helped you at all, these, those were the, the issues. I'm going to leave links down in the description in case you watch this video, you already have a Saab and you're like, oh, I didn't know that, that, that problem. I have that problem. I'm going to leave links to the, the part numbers um, down in the description below so you guys can find the parts. Uh, if I can find them on eBay or Amazon, I'll link those. I'm not affiliated with them, so I don't get anything out of it. If this helped you at all... Um, like, comment, subscribe, follow my Instagram. Uh, I'll leave that in the description as well. Uh, see you next time. Thanks. Bye.